over full of some affairs. <coughs> My mind is booted. Demetrius come, and Aegeus come. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look you see you fit your fancies to your father's will. Or if the law of Athens yields you up, but in no way we make strenuous to death or to a vow of single life. Demetrius and Aegeus go along. I took private matters which concerns yourself against my nuptials. With duty and such, she follows. How now, my love? Why are your cheeks so pale? How chance the rose of their did fade so fast? Belike for want of rain, which I could well, fatigue them from the tempest of mine eyes. I mean, for all that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale of history, the force of true love never did run so. Oh, crop, too high to be enthralled too low. But either it was scrapped in respect of years. Oh, spite, too old to be engaged too young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes. Or if there were a sympathy in force, war, death, and sickness did lay siege to it. If then true lovers have ever been crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience. A good persuasion. Therefore hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. But Mathens is her house from oh, seven leagues. And she respects me as her only son. There her, may I marry you. And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, be employed by father's help to tomorrow night. I do meet thee once with Helena. There I will say for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in number more than ever women spoke. In that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. A promise, love, 